Base Cement was established on this site in 1913. We produce close to 960,000 tonnes of cement a year and it has had a continual series of upgrades and it should be considered as being the state-of-the-art latest technology, uh, fuel efficient and production efficient as well. Up until the tyre project was put in, it was using approximately 70% coal and 30% wood waste. It does reduce our CO2 emissions from fossil fuels by that biogenic carbon content in the end of life tyres. And it's one part of a journey that we're on to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. So the project was first uh, proposed in 2015. We did a lot of research. There was approximately two years of research. Alongside that, there was quite a lot of design work that had to be done to fit the huge equipment into our process. Some 260 tonnes of uh, equipment had to be installed within an existing arrangement. And the actual engineering to shoehorn it into the factory it was uh, quite a challenge and, and that was probably the biggest part, to fit it all in. So Golden Bay Cement uh, is now New Zealand's only local cement manufacturer. Um, been on the site for over a hundred years. We take the raw product, limestone, cement rock, um, and we, uh, we heat it through a um, chemical reaction to create the precursor to cement and that is milled on the site to create what we know as cement. So our existing process is, is um, what's known as a dry process um, and at the, at the heart of it is our preheater tower. What we looked to do was to um, integrate this new, new feed system um, for, for a different fuel. The chip tyres, they, they differ to our existing fuel and it, it needs a longer burn time. So that was the real driver for the change to the process. A new type of um, combustion chamber to give us a, a long residence on the burn. Because the site was existing and we've, we've undergone a number of major upgrades, the challenges were that you know, we didn't have the clean slate, so um, we were dealing with a lot of pre-existing issues, clashes. The big challenge was the condensed shutdown time frame. We had anticipated that it would take uh, 30 to 31 days. We supply 60% of the market and we just can't shut off that supply. So what we have is a feed system that accurately proportions the selected amount of waste end of life tyres to go into the process. The hot disk is basically a, a big rotating path where you feed the, the tyres onto the hot disk. The disk rotates towards the kiln, uh, the tyres are combusting as they turn on the disk and the, the, the energy uh, goes into the process and the gas stream as they get to to the feed point into the kiln, there's a scraper scrapes any residue off, which will be mainly the, the steel and the tyres. To make cement, you need iron, and, and we, we make use of the steel and the tyres that reduces the amount of iron seam that we have to add to get the chemistry right for, for making cement. Refractory is uh, either uh, ceramics or uh, refractory concretes that uh, protect against uh, elevated temperatures, so it's a specially designed material to withstand high temperature. During the project we lined the new hot disk with monolithics refractory, which is castable and uh, gunnable refractory, and then we uh, lined the tertiary air duct with uh, brick line, which was uh, close to a 60 tonne of uh, brick line material. We couldn't take the typical three to four months with our process offline, we condensed that down to 35 days, um, so that meant we had to make some modifications to the hot disk, we had to strengthen the, the support frame and we lifted it uh, complete as one. It also meant we had to go for a, a 600 tonne uh, crawler crane, the largest in the country, a big effort there to, to fit it in the space that we had. We looked at um, several technologies around the world and we had to choose one that gave efficiency, that was proven and that they could display operating units. So we actually visited factories where uh, this technology had been in use since the, since the year 2000 and currently there are well over 20 similar to this operating around the world. This equipment maximises 
the amount of uh, waste end of life tyres that we can use, but it also ensures that it's combusted properly, that there's no residues and therefore it was proven to be the most efficient. As well as that, um, being able to see operating plants using it around the world gave us a high level of confidence that the manufacturer could live up to his promises. I think it's a testament to the team that we were able to deliver this. You know, we were a small team. We are the only um, local manufacturer of cement. It means we hold a lot of the knowledge in-house, the, the, the knowledge that's locally available to this process, we hold in-house. So the team that we had was really key to the success of this project. Um, you know, we, uh, the other element of it is, you know, our local contractors, they supported us really well, um, and that's something I'm proud of. What this project means is that um, it gives us the ability through the same combustion mechanism to add other alternative fuels in addition to the wood waste that we're already using. There are a number of other alternative fuels that we can look at that are on the horizon. Some of them have a more positive reduction of greenhouse gases. Others are waste materials that are difficult to get, in, uh, get rid of in New Zealand. But it is very, very flexible in what can go through it. Golden Base Cement has the lowest embodied carbon of all the cement available in New Zealand and uh, we do that through a system called our Environmental Product Declaration which is independently audited and we're pleased for a small cement company on the far side of the world to be leading the world in many respects, particularly around carbon reduction and also learning from our larger overseas industry people.